In this chapter or in this lecture, we we'll talk about simultaneous linear equation, the big subject, and in particularly, we talk about chess-like game for reordering factorized phase. Okay, let me start with lecture number 25, and the title is Online Chess-like Game for Reordering Factorized Phase for Solving System of Simultaneous Linear Equation. And basically, we are trying to show to you that the process of solving the system of simultaneous linear equation can be explained or interpreted in a better way, which I hope will be more fun to learn through the so-called chess-like game. Uh, before I explain to you about how the chess-like game looks like, let me give you some preliminary background. So suppose, let's say, if you remember, in the Cholesky, algor in the Cholesky algorithm that we discussed earlier, the Cholesky algorithm, OK? In the Cholesky algorithm. If we want to solve the system of equation in the form of a x is equal to b, assuming the matrix A is symmetric and positive definite, is given, and assuming the vector b is also given, and we want to solve for the unknown vector x. Now, in, if you recall in the earlier chapter, the first step that we want to do, we call it step one, which is basically we call factorization phase. Factorized phase. OK? And in this step, what we want to do is to factorize the matrix A into the product of U transpose times U. And then x is still there, that's unknown, is equal to b. And the objective of step number one, which is a factorization phase, is to find out the factorized upper triangular matrix u, which we have already discussed earlier, including the formula and the picture, so that you know how to calculate the matrix u. Then, after that part is done, if you remember, we let the product of u times x is equal to an intermediate vector y. And therefore, in step number two, in step number two, what we want to do is something like u transpose, and instead of time u x we will use a new notation, which is y is equal to b. So in this step, number two, which we call it forward solution step, forward solution step, the objective is to find out the unknown vector y. After that part is done, the last step we're talking is step number three. And step number three, if you remember, we earlier, we say u times x is the same thing as vector y. We remember, we say u x is equal to y. Now, in this step number three, which we call it backward solution, backward solution. And the objective here is, we already know the matrix factorized u from step one. We already know the intermediate vector y from step number two, which is the forward solution phase. We can solve, therefore, the original unknown x. So those are the three basic steps. However, in this particular chapter related to the game, I just want to emphasize only on step number one, OK? We only pay attention to step number one. So what does that mean? 
step number one, that means we want to pay attention only on how do we solve for the unknown factorized matrix U, okay? For that, I hope you still remember we have a formula. For example, if you want to calculate the off-diagonal term U, I, J, we say the formula say it is equal to the original value at the same location ij minus the summation of the product u k i times u k j where the index k go from 1 to i minus 1 and the whole thing here is divided by u i i if you want to calculate the di off diagonal term and then if you remember we also introduced the concept of the picture instead of looking at this equation. So let me present it in a different way like this. Suppose we have a matrix A and right now we want to factorize in order to obtain the matrix U. Now we try to do it in the row by row fashion. That means we want to factorize row 1 first, then we want to factorize row 2 of the matrix U and so on and so on and so on and let's say right now we are in this particular row which we call it row i now in this row i this is a diagonal term and let's say this is the off diagonal term this is a typical off diagonal term and that term let's say we create equal to u at row i column j we want to find out what is the value of this particular term. Well, instead of using the formula right above it, uij, we can figure out this unknown very easily by looking at this column, which you call column j, and this column here, which we call it column i. Now, if you look at those two columns, you can see clearly the summation of this project, of this pro uh, product, UKI times UKJ, can be explained just like the product of this term times that term, minus this term times that term, and so on, and so on, and so on. So, what it means is, let me draw another picture for you. In general, if you have, let's say, a matrix like this, and let's say you want to figure out the particular value of this guy, which is u i j equal to what? Like I told you before, you look at this column, which is column j, and you look at this column here, which is column i, and the most important thing is the product of this term, two term, combined with the product of these two term, and so on, so on. If the summation of those product is zero, and if the original value here corresponding to the so-called AIJ term, if this guy originally is zero, assuming the original value at this location is zero, and assuming the product of this term times that term, this term times that term, they're all zero. In that case then, according to this formula that I wrote for you earlier, if this term Aij is zero and the product, they're all zero, then the Uij is also zero. Which means a zero value here still remains zero after you do factorization. On the other hand, on the other hand, you may have a situation where in the beginning your AIJ value is zero. However, this summation of the product term is non-zero. It is non-zero. In that case, then the value of UIJ will become non-zero, even though originally at the same location AIJ is equal to zero. Whenever this situation occurs, 
a zero value at location aij in the beginning, after factorization, uij become non-zero, then we say it have, we have fill-in term. Fill-in term. Fill-in term. And in my notation, we use the notation f to indicate the so-called fill-in term. OK, without much of a background, I think we should be able to discuss a little bit more about the game, OK? So let me erase all of this first. Let me erase all of this so that we can discuss a little bit better about how the game looks like. Now, assuming if you look on the, uh, on the computer screen, you will see that we have a matrix that is the dimension 8 row by 8 column. Now, I, I assume this matrix here is symmetric positive definite. So that means we can use the Cholesky algorithm to find out the factorized matrix. Okay? Now, as you can see from the computer screen, you have some non-zero value in the beginning of the matrix A. Such as, at this location, the value is 20, the value is 60, 140, and so on. All of those that I mark with, a, with an x corresponding to the non-zero value. Okay? For example, those things. Those are the non-zero value. And this number here is, is 15 and 9 and so on and so on. Okay? There's a lot more non-zero term in the beginning. Here, there, and there, and here. Now, the other term on the upper triangular matrix A, uh, uh, upper triangular portion of the matrix A, you can see they are all zero. What happening is, after you go through the so-called factorization in phase one or step one, a lot of zero, for example, you see here, those rays zero still remain zero. Based on the formula that you have learned or based on the picture that I just refreshed your memory a few minutes ago. However, there is some other term, such a, at this location right there, if you can see in the uh, purple color, at this location, which is in row 4, column 7, okay, what we have is the value of A at row 4, column 7 is equal to 0 initially. So the question becomes, how do we know the factorized term u at the same location, row 4, column 7, will it be equal to 0 or will it be equal to non-zero? Now, if it becomes non-zero, then we say there is a fill-in terms occur. And we will indicate that by the notation f. So, with the background that I already introduced to you, it is not too difficult at all, because if you want to find out what is u for 7, then all we have to remember is we look at column 7, which is right here, column 7, and looking at column 4, column 4. And because for those two columns, you can see the product of this term times that term is non-zero. The product of the next term, 0 times non-zero is 0. You have at least one product of these two numbers is non-zero. Therefore, immediately, we can say u47 will not be 0. It will become non-zero. So whenever that is situation occur, like I told you, then we call it, there's a fill-in term, f, occur right there. And you can see in the process, there's some other fill-in term as well. Okay? So, that is number one. 